August 19th. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 The spiritual life is above human nature, and therefore all the power of human nature cannot inspire it. Nature, we admit, can go far in imitating some of its characteristics. But nature cannot create the essential property or principle of this life. Nature can produce a semblance of faith, as in the case of Simon Magnus, a semblance of repentance, as in the case of Judas, and a semblance of hearing the word with joy, as in the case of Herod. It can even appear to taste the heavenly gift and feel the powers of the world to come. All this and much more can human nature do and yet be human nature still. Here its power stops. There is something which it cannot do. It cannot counterfeit the indwelling of Christ in the sinner's soul. It cannot enable a man to say, I live and Christ lives in me. This infinitely transcends its mightiest power. Spiritual life, then, springs not from human nature and is therefore produced by no natural cause or means, it is from God. He it is who calls this new creation into being, who pencils its wonders, who enkindles its glories, and who breathes over it the breath of life. It is God's life in man's soul. Thus the true Christian is one who can adopt the expressive and emphatic language of Paul, I live, amplifying the words he can exclaim, I live as a quickened soul, I live as a regenerate soul, I live as a pardoned sinner, I live as a justified sinner, I live as an adopted child, I live as an heir of glory, I live live and have never lived before. My whole existence until now has been but as a blank. I never truly, really lived until I died. I lived, if life it may be called, to the world, to sin, to the creature, to myself. But I never lived by Christ, and I never lived to God. Oh, tremendous truth. Oh, solemn thought. For a soul to pass away into eternity without having answered the great end of its creation, without having ever really lived. With what feelings, with what emotions, with what plea will it meet the God who created it? I created you, that God will say, for myself and for my glory. I endowed you with gifts and ennobled you with faculties and clothed you with powers second only to my own. I sent you into the world to expand those gifts, and to employ those faculties, and to exert those powers for my glory, and with a view to the enjoyment of me forever. But you buried those gifts. You abused those faculties. You wasted those powers, and you lived to yourself and not unto me. And now to yourself, and an everlasting banishment from my presence, you shall continue to live through eternity. Come from the four winds, O breath of the living God, and breathe upon the dead that they may live. Avert from the reader so dire a doom, so fearful a catastrophe, and permit none whose eye lights upon this solemn page any longer to live to themselves, but from this moment and forever, gracious Savior, may they live for you. Their solemn determination and their sublime motto this, for me to live is Christ.